you know, I did a lot of work on uh, public housing repositioning and, and other affordable housing issues. Uh, a new uh, kind of interesting program or approach for uh, trying to improve and, and reposition uh, affordable housing assets that's uh, come to light for me. It's not, this is not a new thing by any stretch of the imagination. I've just never had to deal with it. Is doing transfers of project based voucher contracts uh, or termination of those contracts under Section 8BB of the Housing Act. Uh, Section 8, as you, you, you may know, is a is a portion of the, the housing code that allows for uh, housing choice vouchers. Section 8 housing, as some folks refer to it, uh, but it's you know it's a monthly it's a monthly assistance that uh, that goes to folks, and you know, it's kind of a market it's kind of a market approach to helping resolve uh, affordable housing shortages and provide folks a, a hand up and. Section 8 vouchers are, are either portable, so the, you know, the, the tenant, it's, you know, it's their voucher theory of, you know, for in perpetuity for their lifetime. And then there's project-based vouchers that are attached to the real estate. And, uh, you know, periodically those assets that those project-based voucher contracts are attached to uh, become obsolete, they become just kind of worn, no, no longer really serving their purpose. Could be in any number of things. Uh, the case that I'm working on now involves a, uh, a handful, less than 20 uh, single family homes scattered about the community that I'm working in. And the agency has gotten approval from HUD through the 8BB process to terminate the, co the project-based voucher contract on those homes, uh, and they will then transfer it to another property that they own. And so they will, you know, they will stabilize a, an affordable senior property with uh, the, the addition of additional project-based vouchers. So that's a win for the community. Uh, they have these... Uh, scattered single-family homes that they're not able to effectively manage and so that's a, it's a good business move for them if you will uh, and they'll sell those homes on the open market the challenge is those homes are they are occupied and they're occupied by, by real folks and, and folks that have real needs and so the relocation uh, requirements for ABB are unique because they, they look very much like section 18 and that all that's required is uh, offering of a, uh, a voucher, uh, tenant protection voucher, and moving assistance and some notification. The Uniform Act is not applicable in this case, in this, this application of ABB, because there's no federal funding in a, in a project that's displacing folks. Although you could you could argue that the uh, the transfer of those vouchers will improve the operation of the other housing, the senior housing that they're going to go to. There's no development project at that housing. Uh, it's it's merely just layering in rental subsidy uh, onto its balance sheet. And so the Uniform Act does not apply in this case. And. I bring this up because it, it was. It, it, I said this is a new experience for me. I've done a lot of done a lot of Section 18, done a lot of RAD, I've worked on some, some you know, Section 22 stuff. All, you know, all kinds of different things related to transferring of assistance. And uh, 8BB was a new thing. It took some research and and had some initial misunderstandings of what my client was required to do. Um, took a while to unwind it and make sure that they, they in fact did not have a uniform relocation act requirement which has a much higher uh, level benefit to displaced persons so if, if you're 
if you're working on repositioning uh, underperforming obsolete assets and you go the route of ABB, uh, just know that you really have to analyze what it is you're doing to ensure that you do or you do not have a Uniform Act or requirement. It's not totally clear in the regulations. Uh, there's some gray area. There's some if-then type things. Uh, and so be careful because you, you know, you may, you know, if you do it incorrectly, you, you may not be doing something you're supposed to do. If you also do it incorrectly and you make people eligible under the Uniform Act, you may be providing more assistance than you were required to. Uh, and neither are beneficial. And so you have to be aware of what you're doing. Um, and by all means, if I can help you out with this, give me a ring, shoot me an email. Uh, contact me at revivaldevelopmentservices.com uh, or 480-435-0623. Uh, I'm going to greet you. This is Chad, so I'm the guy you're, you know, you're seeing now, and you'll get that guy on the phone. and be happy to help you out and talk through your, your, your situation. Thanks for watching. Bye.